Imagine, if you will, the Mona Lisa, a famed artwork that captivates many who gaze upon it. Now imagine the frame of this famous painting. Odds are you could describe what the painting looks like without seeing it, but you couldn't specify anything on what the frame of this painting looks like. You might give a vague description of it, but I doubt you have remembered any of its details. The frame of a painting is like the base of a model. It's meant to elevate and accentuate the centerpiece without stealing the spotlight. But what happens when you don't base your models at all? Well, what if the Mona Lisa's frame looked like this? Some of the elegance seems to have vanished, I'd say. Many times you see an entire army painted and their models are on empty bases aside from maybe a coat of black or green paint at best. For some people, basing models can seem as unnecessary, but the base gives the model context. It gives it a setting, a story. Unfortunately, most people fall into thinking there's only two types of bases, either nothing or a golden demon winner. Fear not, there are other options, simpler and easier options than a massive diorama base. And I plan on exploring these options in a series of videos of how to achieve a simple type of base that is applicable to almost any minigame there is, brick and stone bases. They'll use cheap and widely available materials that anyone can get a hold of. So, without further ado, let's explore our first option. Starting with what's likely the most available to everyone and possibly the cheapest option, cardstock is an easy avenue to get a brick-like texture on your bases with the least amount of effort. While you could buy a fresh ream of this kind of paper at an office supply store, there's likely an ample source of it in your junk mail. Advertisements and business cards are often printed on cardstock. So instead of throwing it out, you can cut it up into small squares or rectangles of your choice and glue them to your bases for easy tiles. An advantage of cardstock is that since it's a sheet of paper, it's extremely easy to measure and cut the exact shape and size you want repeatedly to get a clean and organized brick pattern. Another advantage of this is if you or your opponent are worried about strict line of sight rules, the cardstock won't increase the height of your models by much so you can still look good without giving up or taking an advantage. Gluing them with a white tacky glue works better than super glue since the paper will likely just absorb the super glue and cause problems. When gluing the paper into a pattern you want, make sure you maintain the pattern even if the pieces go over the edge of your base. After all the pieces are fully glued down, if you have a pair of clippers or small scissors you should go around the base clipping off any extra cardstock. Reducing the surface area of cardstock off of the base will make it easier to trim in the next step. Once things have been clipped down, simply flip the base over onto a cutting mat, and while holding down the base with one hand, cut along the outside edge of the base with an X-Acto knife to trim off any excess cardstock. If need be, you might need to use a file on the edges instead of your blade. Finally, it's recommended to give the whole base another layer of glue to seal everything down, and then if you have any extra details that you want to place, like small rocks or debris, do it now and wait for the glue to dry before removing any excess material you just applied. Finally, choose your paint scheme and dry brush and wash your base as you see fit. Obviously, an advantage of the cardstock is that it can be cut into any shape or size, but squares and rectangles will be the easier shapes to aim for. I find this type of basing good for covering large areas with minimal work needed to be done. You can also stack layers to increase the depth using glue to laminate them together. That's it for this video. Next time I'll be talking about plastic card and a free alternative to achieve thicker tiles.